You guys, something absolutely wild. This is my last ever episode of Fun on Weekdays podcast in 2021. So you know it better be a good one. It's just me here talking to you guys the same way that I started this off. In a bedroom with my camera propped up. Still don't have a professional studio. Maybe that's in store for me in 2022. But I figured there's only one way to end the year. And it starts with a recap. I wish that I could put it into a more aesthetically pleasing montage, but since you're just listening to my voice, I figured let's get y'all all up to speed on what happened in 2021, how I ended up here, and how you're all listening here, whether you just started listening or whether you've been here from the moment that it all began. Um, it really all started in, I believe, May of this past year. So. Actually, no, no, no. Let's rewind. Let's talk about last New Year's Eve. So last New Year's Eve, I took one of these sketchy little limos to a house party in Austin. My sister was visiting me, um, and I spent New Year's Eve at a house party. I didn't go to the bars. And I actually got COVID, which is quite ironic because COVID is now back and stronger than ever. So gearing into the New Year's, we all need to be very cautious of our health, of our friends' health, of our family's health. Everybody, please be safe. Whatever you decide to do this year, be safe. Okay, so I started 2021 off with COVID. That is not the vibe, okay? Not the vibe at all, but nonetheless, I persisted. You know, months went on. Um, I was working at TikTok full-time in my advertising role, and I hit my one-year mark in July. Around that same time uh, was when I was considering starting the podcast. So I believe it was May when I made this TikTok saying, I'm gonna start fun on weekdays, blah, blah, blah. It all came about, and then July was when I had my first episode ever. We looked very similar, sitting in a bedroom, talking to a mic, how it all started. And then August was when I quit my job. So I quit my job at the very beginning of August. I gave them one month notice. And my last day of working at TikTok was, I think, August 29th, August 30th. I'd have to go back and look at the calendar. Um, and then I started Fun on Weekdays full time in September. Crazy. The fact that it's been September, October, November, December. It's been four whole months of doing this full time now. And I still don't know what I'm doing. First thing, meaning I started an LLC, you guys. I have an entity name, Fun on Weekdays LLC. That's mine. I still don't really know what that means, but I guess I'm gonna be working on that in 2022, working on making this more of a professional, actual business, I guess. And then, let's see, in October, I hosted my first ever event. It sold out. Fun on Halloween. If you came out to it in Austin, I am so grateful to have been able to spend that very special memory with you. Um, if you weren't able to make it, don't worry. I have so many fun things planned for 2022. I'm not going to spoil anything, but just know that I'm on my A freaking game. I'm not messing around next year. And if you didn't see me in Austin, I can bet you you will see me in a different city. Okay, with that being said, Next thing that I did was I started a Facebook group about like a month ago and the Facebook group is popping off you guys. We have like almost 6,000 people in it and I would say all of the people that are in the Facebook group are like the most engaging, welcoming, nicest, supportive people ever. It is so cool to see people like consistently posting in there, making new friends. There's so many group me's that have come out of it in different cities. Um, and there's people who are meeting up in person on weekdays, making new friends, doing spontaneous things, and really living by the motto of fun on weekdays. So how cool is that? I finally started the Facebook group. It's been something I've been, you know, thinking about for a while that I just, for whatever reason, I kept putting it off. And then I finally did it. And I'm so glad that I did. And so for going into the next year, I'm really excited to see how that group progresses and how it grows. And then most recently, a uh, drum roll, I'm coming out with merch. I know you guys have been asking forever. And ironically, I'm wearing a sweatshirt right now that says fun on weekdays. This is not my personal merch. This is a sweatshirt that was sent to me by one of my followers. I would have to go back and look to make sure who sent it to me. I will tag them in the, in the trailer reel that I post to my Instagram, right? So I will say I am coming out with merch. That has been quite a journey, okay? trucker hats 
that I designed on Photoshop. I just kind of like whipped it right up, slapped it on a pink trucker hack, and I said, sure, let's go with it. And then I have stickers. I'm really excited about the stickers. I'm gonna put them on literally everything that I own. <laughs> just leave my mark everywhere I go. And right now I'm working on crew necks. So that's kind of just what has been going on this past year, ever since starting Fun on Weekdays. And then uh, last thing is I'm stepping up my IG game, okay? If you don't follow me on Instagram yet for the podcast page, please do. I'm like trying so hard to get to 20K. I just think that would be so cool. I, this is really random and not that I should compare myself to anybody, but I'm so proud of the fact that like I have such an engaging community and following since starting this podcast. Um, but I've had a really, really hard time like growing the Instagram account and trying to come up with more and more content. So I've been working on that and I'm really excited. Uh, I've had a lot of more creativity lately, I've had some like creative blocks. So going into 2022, we got a fresh start. That's the best thing about the new year is that you can leave everything from the prior year behind and never look back. No more excuses. Okay, so going into that, we just did a recap. We, that, like I just said, we can leave it in the past. The important thing now is where is it going? What are your plans, Jenna? What is your vision? Okay, so we all know that when I started Fun on Weekdays, I had a corporate job. I said, we all work nine to five, but why shouldn't we go out after we're off? Let's go to happy hour. And I'm not gonna lie, I did start it kind of with that as, you know, not like the goal, not the purpose, but that was a little bit of the messaging. And over time, I realized that there is more of an impact with the current messaging that I think that I try to get across, which is bringing people together through my very supportive community of people who listen to my podcast and are empowered by it and motivated by it so my goal for the new year is exactly that is to help you guys take control of your life and to meet new people in your cities move to a new city make like those life jumps and take control of what you want to do with your life so that's what all of fun on weekdays is about and that's what it's going to continue to be about in the next year next thing is I want to come up with an awesome intro, you guys. I need some, like, music. I know that we all said we wanted that song, Weekdays, by Lewis the Child, but it's copyrighted, so I can't use it. So I'm trying to come up with some type of, like, really cool instrumental. Um, I don't know why. I just keep putting it off because I have, I don't have any ideas for the intro. And one of my ideas was to have like a bunch of my followers give me one word that they would that they would use to describe my podcast. And so it would start off as like, welcome back to Fun on Weekdays podcast. I'm your host, Jenna Palick, and Fun on Weekdays is, and then it would be like different people's voices. And it would be like, empowering, funny, adventurous, you know, it'd be like a bunch of different adjectives. But then I realized that the, the quality of everybody's audio wouldn't, be able to match each other's and so I don't know how realistic that is to do unless I just get all of my friends to record it into the same microphone so I'm still brainstorming some options here if you have any good ideas feel free to send me a DM would love uh, your guys's input because the exact same reason why I started this is for you so if you have something that you want I'm here to listen okay next thing maybe next year I don't know, fingers crossed, I won't be filming and recording this on a bed with a little DIY um, tripod. Next year, who knows, maybe I'll have a studio. So there was a time where I was talking about getting a fun on weekdays house. I feel like I'm the type of person that I get an idea in my head and I let it fester and just completely take control of me. I get an idea and I run because I get so excited about it. But then, I start to kind of think about it more logistically. And I'm like, wait a second. I don't have money to buy a house right now. I don't even have credit to buy a house. I can't buy a house for fun on weekdays, but maybe, just maybe, I can find a space that I can rent temporarily. Um, maybe some friends, wink wink, will have some space that I can rent out from them. Who knows? But I'm really manifesting that I get a you know, more uh, permanent 
podcast studio i think it would be really nice to just have a consistent background consistent audio i know for you guys listening it's not necessarily the best when you don't know what the audio is going to be like sometimes it's super crisp other times there you can hear so much background noise there's beeping there's honking there's phones vibrating um so <laughs> maybe in 2022 we'll get that taken care of uh next thing i have this insane idea you guys okay so i've done an event right and it was awesome so many people came there were like 300 plus people and it was just one night for a few hours. And I would love to do more of them, but what if, and just what if, hear me out, what if we did like a whole weekend experience? So I was thinking about it and I'm like, how fun would it be to bring people in to different cities and to like schedule all of these different types of activities of things that they would never normally do get people out of their comfort zone i'm thinking almost kind of like a sorority retreat did you guys ever do those um we went to a sorority retreat when i first joined my my sorority in college and the first thing that we did there was like a candle pass that's what we called it and it was basically going around a circle saying um something that you don't really open up to a lot of to a lot of people about and it was a really great way to just kind of like knock down those barriers and get to know people and just be like super vulnerable okay what if i get a bunch of people together in different cities and we like kick it off in that way so everybody's getting to know each other over the weekend you're forming lasting friendships but you're also being inspired because you're getting out of your comfort zone doing activities that are then going to inspire you to integrate them into your weekdays every weekend or every week what do we think about that i think there's a lot of logistics that go into it just like i said how i got super excited about the fun on weekdays house i don't think that this is one of those things though i think that i can truly make it happen so yeah i would love your input on that too um that's just something i've been thinking about and then i would also like i said love to do a lot more events um it's great to do a huge event like the one that i did for halloween but on a more day-to-day -day basis, um, I would love to just do like smaller things, whether that is saying, hey, I'm going to this workout class, like let's get a group of people together, or joining people's group meets from different cities and seeing plans that they're making and then just randomly booking a flight and showing up and surprising people and just being able to spend time with my listeners. How fun! And just being inspired by you guys. So that's something that I'm really, really looking forward to doing. And then also with that as well, building the Facebook group because that's been such a great way to really connect with the community and make all of you feel super welcomed um, and really just connect with each other to start having conversations and supporting each other and really going out and having fun together, which was the whole point of this. So cool. It's so full circle. So now that we've talked about fun on weekdays, we recapped, we talked about what's coming. Okay. It's about to be New Year's Eve. We have just a couple more days. So we need to talk about the most important part of New Year's Eve. Do you know what that is? Obviously, the outfits. So people keep asking me, Jenna, what should I wear for New Year's Eve? Give me outfit inspiration. And this is what I say. We need sparkles, we need sequins, we need pearls, embellishments, metallics. I wanna see you in gloves, okay? Feathers, literally anything that is over the top, dramatic girly um i mean you don't have to be girly you can be edgy whatever it is ask yourself would harry styles wear this outfit and if the answer is yes perfect you are dressed for the occasion if the answer is no step it up add a feather boa add something in your hair this is not the time to dress like we normally do i don't want to see you in some light wash jeans with a black western belt and a black top and those black block heels, okay? No, we are leaving that in 2018 at the college bars, where it is meant to be. This year, we are stepping out of our comfort zone. We are putting on an outfit that you feel good and confident and hot in, and that's what we're wearing. So, some things that I have been loving. Number one, like I said, gloves. I see gloves all over TikTok. I don't know what it is, but there's something so, like, chic and modern 
and just fashionable about it. I love it. Um, for me personally, what am I going to wear? Well, I'm not somebody that loves to plan. And my family is actually going to be in New Year's, uh, in New Year's Eve. My family is actually going to be in Austin for New Year's Eve. So I don't know what our plans are yet. And I don't know if it necessarily makes sense to wear an itchy sequin dress if I'm going to be in my own apartment. Maybe for the pictures, but for anything else, I'm not entirely sure yet. So what I wear, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm sure I'll make TikToks about it and have you guys help me decide because we all know that I can't dress myself. So why I feel like I am, you know, qualified to give you this fashionable advice, I don't know. But some other things that I've been super into. Okay, you can never go wrong with a set of some sort, some type of matching outfit. What I really love are long, high-waisted pants that are flared at the bottom. I feel like it's so flattering on everybody. You get a tiny little top. Like, I'm, I'm talking like it just covers your nipples. That's all. We don't, anything else, you're good. So just a tiny little top and then we get a matching type of jacket, preferably like a longer blazer. And if it's an embellished blazer or it's a statement blazer, even better, love that. So we love a set. Um, it could also be a skirt and a top. If it's gonna be a skirt and a top, I would like to see it with long sleeves, some type of like, maybe it's satin, um, maybe some like cute embellishments on it. And I wanna see tights, some sheer tights whether they are patterned or just sheer, maybe a color. Let's get a little crazy, okay? Let's get a little bold. And then I wanna see it with either tall boots. I, I want platforms. So either tall platform boots or a Mary Jane platform heel. I love that. Ah, oh, I'm so into the Mary Jane heels right now. I, what I'm picturing actually is that photo of Addison Rae wearing the pink Versace outfit. Do you know what I'm talking about? Like I said, I want platform heels. We could also wear some tall cowboy boots. You could dress it up. I love like white or, oh my God, I've been so into metallic shoes. They have the metallic cowboy boots from, oh my gosh, Jeffrey Campbell. It, I mean, if you're willing and ready to spend a pretty penny on some cowboy boots, please get the green, the light blue or the fuchsia. Oh, oh my God. I should have put those on my Christmas list. Seriously, I look at those boots online and my mouth waters. I like get turned on looking at those boots. They are, oh my God, they're so sexy. So if you can, get those boots. But if you can't, some other ideas. Platform heels, like I said, platform Mary Janes. Literally any type of shoe that would intimidate anyone. Because that's our goal. We want to be powerful. We want to be intimidating. And we want to take control of the year. You step in a room, everybody's looking at you being like, oh my God, she is cool. <laughs> That's my goal. Okay, some other things I've been super into like jewel tones. So like the emeralds, the bright kind of cobalt navy blues. Um, a deep purple, I love that. I feel like that's always just popular around this time of year because it's winter, it's a little colder. People aren't typically wearing, you know, like pastels yet. Um, you can wear black. Black is flattering on everyone. I would also like to see an all white outfit. I do not believe in not wearing white after Labor Day. That is just a bunch of bullshit. I don't know who came up with that. That is an outdated rule that nobody should live by. So if you're going to wear white, do it all out. I would like to see a full monochrome white outfit. Maybe not the outfit that I wore. Okay. If you... <laughs> If you saw my outfit that I was going to potentially wear to my friend's holiday party, I was wearing a white blouse, a white sweater vest, and these like white sequenced flare pants the other day on TikTok. And people were like, oh my God, no offense, girl, we love you, but you kind of look like my grandma going to Christmas mass, or you look like a really stylish mom. And I'm like, oh boy. Okay, so if you do wear the white outfit, don't get inspiration from what I wore because people will tell you that you look very old. <laughs> I mean, and if you're going for that though, own it, own it. Cause I thought I looked good in that outfit. So whatever. And then if we're, if you're going to wear black, what I want to see from you is a mixture of textures. I don't just want to see like a black cotton shirt with like black jeans. No, uh, uh, I need leather. I need satin. I need uh, I was about to say felt, uh, velvet, we could even do that. 
we could do um i wore these pants to harry styles concert that are like a disco kind of like stretchy material i don't even know what you would call it um feathers basically i want to see you just playing with the textures because just an all flat black outfit that's not doing it for me mm -mm. no we got to step it up elevate it okay elevate it in any way that you can okay then when it comes to hair and makeup this is not your time of the year to get away from what you know and love this is not your time to curl your hair in the way that you saw on TikTok for the first time ever because you know what's gonna happen is you're not used to doing it and you're not gonna be used to what it looks like and you're probably not gonna like it. And I know that from personal experience. Every single time that I wanna mix up my hair or my makeup and do it completely different, I'm like, oh my God, I don't like how I look. And if you don't like how you look and you don't feel good going into the new year, it kind of ruins the mood, right? So stick to what you know, but let's, maybe step it up just a little bit, okay? So do your makeup the way that you normally do, but let's add like a pop of color in the eyeliner. Let's do like a pink subtle eyeliner wing, maybe like a cobalt blue. Let's do like a different shade lipstick than you normally wear or a different lip gloss, maybe a little bit more highlighter. Curl your hair maybe a little bit more. Um, something else, maybe add some tinsel to your hair. What do we think about that? I feel like Y2K is super popular right now. We all know that we, every single one of us, have one of those giant feathers in our hair in middle school. And it's only a matter of time before the feathers come back. So why not just be ahead of the trend and get the tinsel? Because I feel like the feathers walked so the tinsel could run. So let's just skip the, the feather phase and go straight to the tinsel. And also it's pretty festive too. Um, I feel like that could be cool. And then, uh, let's see. Oh, this is my last thing. And I feel like this is helpful for anybody else out there that is similar to me. You're a forgetful person, right? And you get so caught up in celebrating and having a good time with friends and chugging the shot that you don't want to take, but you have to. Um, that you set your jacket down somewhere and you forget it. And then the next day, you have to track it down and then you probably don't get it back. So let's think to ourselves, is the place that I'm going to going to be crowded and hot? If that's the case and I'm gonna take the jacket off, then just don't wear the jacket because you're gonna forget it somewhere and you're gonna be really mad at yourself because the likelihood of you getting it back is not very high. <laughs> okay well i hope you guys enjoyed that little segment right there of my fashion tips that i am not accredited to give you uh going into another common i guess kind of theme is i have some tips for you for new year's eve some do's and don'ts if you will so we're going to start off with the don'ts okay number one and this goes along with the outfits don't forget to take pictures because your outfit truly only matters if it's photographed. And if you have the good picture, you're starting the year off with the Insta feed, okay? You have like the fire picture. If you're single, people know that going into the new year. If you are happily engaged or married in a relationship, it's your time to show it off with a very cute picture that you not only look good in, but your outfit is fire. Okay, so don't forget to take the picture. You don't have to post it, but the outfit didn't really exist if you don't have a picture in it, did it? No, it didn't. Number two, this is another one that comes from my own personal experience. Please, whatever you do, don't drink too much champagne, okay? Champagne is meant to be a toast. Champagne is not meant to be the thing that you drink straight. Uh, I actually made a TikTok one time calling it Champagne. And for whatever reason, that TikTok blew up. I did not think it was funny at all. But basically in the TikTok, I said, I don't know how people even enjoy the taste of it. Like it tastes so bad to me. So if you're gonna drink champagne, limit yourself because champagne gives you the worst hangover I've ever had. I remember two years ago, I was celebrating, what was it? I was celebrating 2020 and I drank so much champagne. I drank an entire bottle of champagne at the pregame before even going to the bar. And then we did like toasts of champagne at the bar and then we were doing shots. And I remember 
this is maybe a little bit gross, but I was throwing up all night when I got back. I just was so sick. And the entire next day, horrible. I regretted it so much. So if there's one piece of advice I could give you, don't drink champagne. This also goes along with the pre-gaming thing. Don't drink too much at the pre-game. The whole point of New Year's Eve is to be able to watch the ball drop at midnight. So we gotta make sure that you can make it through the night until midnight. Okay, another one about the pre-game. Make sure that your phone is charged. <laughs> make sure that you do not leave the pre-game with low battery. And if you are, you are leaving the pre-game with a portable charger or a charger that you can somehow finesse with the bartenders and get them to plug it in behind the bar. Or if you're going to like a house party, make sure that your friends have a charger or you know wherever you're going that you are in touch with your friends and that you don't lose your phone or it dies and then you're off on your own. That's the worst thing ever. Um, okay, some other things. Let's see, well, while we're still talking kind of about the pre-gaming and the alcohol situation, if you don't drink, awesome. Oh my gosh, good for you, nothing wrong with that. If you do drink, please remind yourself that beer before liquor never been sicker. Liquor before beer, you're in the clear, okay? Don't, if you're gonna mix it, make sure you're doing it in the right order. Because if you, if you mess up the order, you're, you're gonna regret it. So just tell yourself that little rhyme, that little poem, sweet words. Liquor before beer, you're in the clear. Beer before liquor, never been sicker. That's a motto to live by. Another thing, this is something that we all need to talk about. We hype up New Year's Eve to be the best night of the year because we just expect it to be. It's a night that everybody talks about. You make these elaborate plans, you make these elaborate outfits, and you just expect it to be so fun that you, when you have such high expectations, it's so easy to not meet the expectations and be disappointed. So let's set some realistic expectations. It's probably not gonna be the best night of your life because the best nights of your lives are the ones that you don't plan at all. Keep that in mind. Um, <laughs> So do spend time with the people that you truly care about and don't get so caught up in the plan itself. Care more about the people you're surrounded by than the activity because if you're around good company, you're gonna have fun regardless. Okay, another one. You guys, I'm being serious, okay? We're going into a new year. Don't kiss your ex-boyfriend. And if anything else, don't go home with him. No. Uh-uh, we are not going back into that. We're not falling back into the pattern. We are resetting. We are putting ourselves first. We are not falling back into his trap. It's not happening. Don't kiss your ex-boyfriend. However, we're gonna switch gears and go into the do's. Do kiss your best friend because your best friend, you're never gonna regret that. You're never gonna look back and be like, oh, I wish I never kissed my girlfriend, you know? No one's ever said that. I have never once looked back and been like, Hmm, I wish that I was kissing some random boy instead of my friend. Um, yeah, I feel like on New Year's Eve, everybody's so worried about who you're gonna kiss when the ball drops, and like, why? Where did that trend even originate from? Why did that become a thing? I'm so confused. Well, anyways, I know who I would prefer to kiss at midnight, but realistically, I'm spending New Year's with my family, so I'm probably gonna kiss my dad, or He's gonna kiss me on the cheek, <laughs> my mom's gonna hug me, and it's just gonna be a very wholesome year this year. No making out with strangers for me, hopefully not for you either, because let's remind ourselves that Omnicrom is not, is that how you say it? Omnicrom, Omnicron, Omnicron? Omnicron is not here to play, so let's not give it more reason to stick around for longer in the year than it has to. Okay. Uh, let's see, next one. Oh, along the lines of kissing someone. Okay, we were talking about makeup before, and I was saying, play around with the makeup, you know, do something fun. When it comes to lipstick, though, I don't know. If you're, if you're planning to kiss someone, it might not be the night for a bold red lip, okay? Because once you kiss that person, you're going to look like you have spaghetti-stained Kool-Aid lips, where it's in the corners of your mouth and it's like bleeding into your perfectly, uh, you know, what's the word? Perfectly set concealer and contour and it's gonna mess up the whole look. It's not very, it's not very chic. So 
navy stick with a nude lip and bring oh there's another one bring the lipstick with you bring the lip gloss with you because if you do kiss someone you're gonna need to do a little touch up okay next one do watch hours of youtube new york new year's oh my god <laughs> let's just start over do watch hours of youtube tutorials for new year's eve makeup looks that you are never actually going to do because it's fun it's fun to get inspiration and to actually genuinely believe that you could ever recreate a nikki tutorials look on yourself i watch them for hours every single year and i have never once never once tried to attempt it on myself but for whatever reason i watch them and i feel super inspired that I could if I did try hard enough. Uh, maybe that'll be a thing this year. Maybe I'll actually try it, who knows. But do watch it, it's fun, super fun. Okay, another one, take care of yourselves. Do drink Water Boy the next morning so that you're not hung over for the entire day. Because you know what's gonna happen is your family's gonna come over, you're gonna have family dinner, and your parents are gonna force you to eat that piece of sauerkraut, sauerkraut for good luck. And when you're hungover and you're eating sauerkraut and kibasi, that is just a match made in the bathroom. That is asking for you to spew it right up into the toilet. So let's nip that hangover in the butt, get yourself some water boy, order it in advance. Uh, this is not sponsored at all, but obviously, you know, I believe in the business. I love Mike and Connor. So this is my unendorsed suggestion. Truly, it's like the only thing that makes me feel better and not shaky. You know when you wake up, especially after drinking champagne and, you're, and your body is shaking? I've never had worse shakes than from champagne, Mike's Hard, and Twisted Tea. Basically anything that screams sugar, you're gonna have those shakes. That's the only thing that's ever made me feel like significantly better. Um, so take care of yourselves. Next thing, do make a dope montage of every single good memory you've had in 2021 because you're gonna have that video to look back on as a memory and like who knows you can have that to share to your family when you're older like look what i was doing in 2021 and who knows maybe you'll go viral on tiktok maybe it'll be the start of your tiktok career you never know what video can really start it off so make the video and who cares if you repost your snapchat memories post it who cares if people think it's annoying repost every single picture you're ever tagged in on your story if people unfollow you for that who freaking cares we don't need those people in 2022 um next one do pregame at the party to your spotify playlist of your most played songs of 2021 music is such a good way to celebrate moments and to reflect on certain times of your lives and this is going to be the last day of 2021 that you can listen to the playlist that got you through all of the hard all of the good all of the sad all of the happiest moments of 2021 i think this might be the most like genuine sincere thing that i've said since i started recording this podcast episode but truly i think music is such a way that people get through things and so if this is your last night to dance to it to sing your heart out to it do it I mean, obviously, of course, you can always bring it into 2022, but let's celebrate with the songs that got us through this year. Okay, next one. Like I said, COVID's still around, so do make sure that you get tested and that you don't have COVID before you're going out and celebrating and kissing someone on New Year's. Be mindful of your surroundings. Be mindful of yourself. You don't want to go into 2022 being sick. It's not the move. It's not the vibe. We're not here for that. It's just not, it's just not good. So get a COVID test, get vaccinated, do what you gotta do so that you can spend New Year's Eve with the people around you that you care about. And then last one for a do is do make New Year's resolutions that you will actually follow through with. Every year I come up with this list of things that I wanna accomplish. And I'm like, yeah, it's fun to say it out loud, but am I actually gonna do it? Uh, no, probably not. So. I have curated a beautiful list of my 2022 New Year's resolutions that I hope can help inspire you to add you to add to your list as well. Number one, here we go. We're going to kick it off. These are my New Year's resolutions. Number one is to read more books. So this year I read three books, which is three more this year than I've ever read in my life. 
<laughs> and every single time I finished the book and I read that last page, I have never felt something more satisfying. I'm like, I feel a little bit smarter, a little bit more wise, and a whole lot better than everyone else. Because reading a book gives you this sense of like, I don't know, I've always thought that people who read are better than everyone. Because I'm like, mm, you are so educated. And this is being so sincere, I'm not kidding. People that like love to go to Barnes and Nobles, I would love to be that person. I'm not that person, but maybe I will be. So I'm gonna read more books. And if I could give you one book recommendation of 2022, it is the book that I talked about um, on Thanksgiving, which is The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. It is so good. And if there's one thing that's gonna change your mindset for the year, it is that book. So read more books. That's on my list. Okay, number two, which this is on my list every single year, is fitness and taking control of like my physical health. Uh, so at the beginning of this past year, I got super into working out. I was running a lot more, which I, I don't run anymore. I don't think I ran in the past probably four or five months. Um, one of my resolutions is to start running again. Um, <laughs> I got a Apple Watch for Christmas last year specifically so that I could get myself to be more motivated to run. Um, and so I'm gonna pick that back up this year. I think I'm really gonna hold myself accountable for that. And the way I'm going to do it is that I want to commit to doing a 5K. A 5K really doesn't sound like much, but if I'm ever going to potentially be a part of a family that's gonna do a turkey trot on Thanksgiving, I better be prepared. So next year I wanna get into running. Some other things too, I love cycling. I wanna to go to more cycling classes consistently because it's the best workout ever. My arms have never been more toned than when I was doing cycling classes consistently. Bar, bar is gonna to tone your booty and your legs and your quads and just, ugh, bar is so fun. And you feel very sophisticated doing it too. It's like such an elegant, beautiful workout that you kind of feel like you're dancing in a way and you're not really working out. Um, Pilates is a great one too. It's a little bit more high energy. Put yourself out there and do a workout class with a group of people because being surrounded by people who are doing the same workout is way more motivating than going to the gym and getting on a treadmill or getting on, you know, like a cardio machine and not really knowing what to do or being intimidated by the weight machine, by the free weights. Um, that's another thing too, is I want to get into weightlifting. No, I'm not, I'm not talking like bodybuilding. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to be competing in any bodybuilding competitions in 2022, but I do want to know how to properly even set up a squat rack. Like I avoid that thing at all costs when I go to the gym, unless I'm going with Connor and he's like doing it for me, I would have no idea. So I would like to find some girls, find a community of people that are not afraid or embarrassed of doing that at the gym. And I think that'd be something really nice. Um, also want to get into kickboxing. I just think it's so badass. Like, uh, I've never felt more cool than when I'm doing fight camp on my balcony and I'm boxing. Uh, I made a TikTok, but I've never done the kickboxing classes because it's just intimidating to me and I don't know how to properly like do the form. So I want to get into kickboxing too. Okay. Next one is I want to take control of my, uh, health in terms of like diet. So we all know that I'm gluten and dairy free for the past like two and a half, three months. Um, but majority of that is because I've been eating out and I've been buying things that are gluten-free and dairy-free. Uh, so I really want to teach myself how to learn to cook. And I think if you're in the same boat as me, the first step to that is just buying an air fryer. I think that you could literally put a piece of cardboard in an air fryer, put some everything bagel seasoning on it or some Montreal steak seasoning on it. Ugh, chef's kiss. There's, there's no wrong that an air fryer could do. So I want to teach myself to like cooking. And I think the first step to that is enjoying what it tastes like when I do cook. And I can't confidently say that I've ever cooked a meal that I actually enjoyed eating. <laughs> so let's, let's become chefs in 2022. Next one, I want to take care of my womenly health as well. I guess this is my time to admit that I know, have still yet to go to the gynecologist. I know, I know you guys, it's so bad. I really need to go. But the thing is, when I quit my job, I was no longer on healthcare. 
um, I was not on my parents' healthcare for a little bit because they, their provider isn't available in Texas. But at the beginning of this upcoming year, I'm gonna be back on my parents. We figured it out with our provider, whatever. And um, now, I, now I'll have like insurance to cover it. So I am going to schedule a gynecologist appointment. And I think my epiphany that I really need to go, you guys, this is a little TMI, but it's normal, it's human. We all get UTIs, we all get yeast infections. And you know what, I got my first yeast infection ever this year. And I'm like, how the fuck did that even happen? I haven't eaten bread in months. I've been gluten free. <laughs> did you guys laugh at that joke? Please tell me you did. Please tell me that you understood because I did not just expose myself like that to not get at least a little bit of a chuckle out of you. But no, really, I'm not kidding. Um, this is your reminder to if my dad's listening, I'm so sorry, but this is your reminder to pee after you, you know what, to clean, you know, to take care of what's going on down there, okay? And also when you're going to the gym and you're, and you're wearing leggings and you have that crotch sweat on those tight pants and you get home from the gym and you think you're just gonna like chill out and watch TV and cook a meal, no, don't do it. Don't stay in those outfit, in those clothes any longer than you have to. Take them off, go take a shower because that's another way to get a yeast infection and it's not freaking fun. It feels like there's a literal knife up your hoo-ha. It's not good. So yeah, let's take care of our, of our feminine, <laughs> of our feminine health this year, you guys. I'm right there with you. All right, next one, this is also another bit of like an adulting one is opening a credit card. Um, how I am 24 years old and still don't have a credit card is beyond me. Apparently you need to build credit to buy a house, to buy a car, to buy pretty much anything. And I don't have that. Um, so if I'm considering like buying a house to maybe potentially when my lease is up, I should probably work on that. So first thing on my list of this next year is to go to the bank and open a credit card and to build my credit. Um, and I want my credit score to be like super high. I don't really know how any of that works. I should probably do some research, but also in terms of resolutions with uh, financing, I really want to get into like stocks or investing. I don't know. I don't know. I, I see a lot of people in crypto and NFTs. What the hell is that? What is that? I feel like I'm missing out on something. So if, if I don't become a part of it, I, it's my resolution to at least learn about it. <laughs> Okay, another one along with uh, finances kind of is I want to pay off my student loans this year. I want to be debt free, baby. Start off the year without having to worry about anything else. Uh, my student loans have been kind of like put on the back burner because they've been forgiven for a little while because of COVID. But starting in January, um, it's going to start acc accruing, accumulating, whatever the word is. It's going to start building interest. So one of my goals is to just like pay it off and not have the burden of it anymore. Um, so yeah, I think that'll be like a really good thing to just kind of clean slate. Um, another one, I wanna be more organized and find more of a routine. Obviously ever since I quit my job, I've really, really struggled to find like a schedule and how to kind of time block my days so that I feel like I have a sense of normalcy. Um, I might even use a planner this year, you guys. I might, I'm, I'm not saying I will, it's not likely more than 50%, but I might use my calendar and my phone more. Um, but just being a little bit more organized, I think I really, really need that because it's really stressful. It's really, really stressful when you're like me and you're forgetful and you're messy and you're just kind of all over the place. So that's another one. Uh, let's see, I wanna travel out of the country. Obviously COVID's back around, so I don't know if that's actually feasible for this upcoming year but i feel like i've traveled a lot this past year which i've been so fortunate for but i've never gone outside of the u.s other than mexico to like cancun and cabo and so i really want to go to like europe or greece i've always always wanted to go to australia i don't know why you'd think that i'd be terrified of the spiders there but i've always wanted to go there so maybe this is my time to do it get a little more worldly a little more cultured if you will uh, I don't want to commit some more time to my mental health too. I mean, this year was just 
it was really rough on me. I'm not going to lie. I feel like I've shared a lot of that on social media and I really found value in unplugging from social media, even though it's so much of my life now. Um, I do think that it's even more important for me to take a step away from it. Uh, I've also never gone to a therapist. Um, I know that I talk about it and I advocate for it all the time, but I've honestly never gone personally. And I I'm a huge proponent of it. I think that everybody should go. And I love hearing everybody's stories like, oh yeah, my therapist is my best friend. I'm like, I want that. So I'm going to find a therapist that's my best friend in this upcoming year because I think that, honestly, I really need it. I really just need an outlet, an unbiased person that I can go to and just kind of talk things through with. I think that's really healthy and I think that's something that I need to be in a good mental state for next year. Uh, another one, and this is usually on my list, but I want to find a new hobby and just something that interests me that kind of gets me out of my comfort zone. So one of my ideas is to join an intramural league. Um, I'm thinking pickleball, volleyball, softball. Those three would technically qualify me as a triathlete. So you might say I'm a little athletic. Uh, my friends from high school would definitely disagree with that statement, but you know, I might become an athlete this year. And my last one is I wanna make an impact. And I feel like there's so many different ways that you can do that. The number one thing that I want to do a lot is I want to do more like community service and volunteer work. I feel like that's something that I truly haven't done a whole lot of since college um, when I was in a sorority and we did a lot of that for philanthropy and community service hours. And it's just something that's so fulfilling and it's so grounding and it gives you more purpose and something bigger than yourself. So that's something that I definitely want to do. I've also been thinking about becoming a cheerleading coach. Is it because I'm a little bit stuck in high school? Uh, who knows? Is it because I still have the moves and I can't get my sideline uh, line dances out of my head? Maybe. But I also just think it would be really fun. And I would love to be just like an older kind of role model for a group of girls. A group of young girls in high school or middle school, I feel like I could really benefit and learn from them in the same way that they could benefit and learn from me. So that's been something I've been thinking about a lot. If you know of any cheerleading teams that are needing a coach, an assistant, let me know, hit a girl up, because I'm looking for a little part-time job. And then the last one, which should be obvious, but I have to say, is I want to make an impact through Fun on Weekdays in this upcoming year. Um, my entire goal with this now, which has changed, like I said, since starting it, is that I just want to bring people together and I want to help you guys create memories and take control of your life and like just literally go after what you want make whatever you want happen um and it's just been so incredible to see the impact that i've made so far and i want to continue to see that in 2022 so i wanted to kind of end the episode off on a high note get you hyped up about next year so i wrote like this little quote on my outline and it is this 2022 is not my year it's not even your year it is our year and we're gonna get through it every single tuesday whether we are laughing together crying together we're traveling together we're talking about our struggles together we're being vulnerable together whatever it is we're gonna get through 2022 together through fun on weekdays whether that's you're listening to me in your car listening while you're working out you're on a walk you're at work and I'm giving you the motivation to make these changes in your life because 2022 is truly the time to do the things that you have been putting off. If you have a toxic relationship right now, break up with them. Don't even go into the new year with that relationship. Break up with them. That's your year. If This is our year to take control of our mental health, our physical health, to get ourselves in shape so we can be the best person that we possibly can be, to quit your job that you hate that you are not inspired by and to pursue something that you're passionate about. Make that your career. To take risks and to be spontaneous. This is our year to open our hearts and to open our minds to meeting new people, to adapting new beliefs and new values. Like it is our year to truly involve into our young adults to become the people that we have the potential to be. Um, to use our struggles this year as our inspiration, to use our rejection as our motivation to work harder. 
Um, that's something that I always preach is that rejection is just one no when there's one yes that's out there just waiting for you and you have to work hard and see the light at the end of the tunnel in order to get it. Uh, this is also our year to let go of every single excuse that we have been making for ourselves of why we can't accomplish something. But it's also our year to acknowledge why we have those excuses, acknowledge the doubts that we have in ourselves and look them dead in the eye and literally just throw it away. Because this is our year to just let our guards down, take a chance and put ourselves first. And hopefully every single Tuesday that you put on one of my podcasts, you can take something meaningful and impactful out of it. Um, I think that I try to have a message in every single you know episode around a different topic. And going into 2022, like I just want to be the person that you can come listen to and you feel safe and you feel heard and you feel like there's somebody else out there that relates to you. So, oh my God, I'm getting a little emotional just thinking about how much the year has kind of come full circle. And this is just crazy. This is the last time I'm signing off in 2021. And the next time you hear my voice will be a new year. So you guys have fun, be safe, be healthy, and reflect on this past year. Be proud of your accomplishments and really own it and get ready for a freaking amazing year. Why? <laughs> I just said amazing. Why did I just say amazing? All right, you guys know how this works. I will talk to you next Tuesday in 2022. Bye everybody, I love you.